Cold as hell. Well, too hot, man. After Coglin's about to talk. Oh, about to, shit. About to hit say me. some shit. Go on, hit me with some shit. <laughs> What is he talking? Did he say control? Yeah. They control shit, bruv. They couldn't even control their own emotions. Is he taking a piss? Fucking absolutely shite when. I don't like him. I honestly do not like him. I don't know what it is about Postacoglu. I just do not like him. I don't see him as a good coach. I'm, I'm, not, honest. Listening. I'm not listening to the end. No, nah, bollocks to that guy. To be fair, it looks like we're jumping straight into since I mentioned Postacoglu. So let's... Are we diving you... straight in or what? I think do you know what I think we I think we should right because again we're going to try to make this a bit of a shorter pod because yeah. as we record this it's eleven o'clock and we do have jobs and shit so let's it's jump straight in bro I, obviously you know straight off the back of the Chelsea match yeah decent win wasn't it decent yeah. win in terms of when you look at it decent but if you look as a result you think oh fully pain eh? what did Chelsea do to Tottenham four so one when you but say then, decent win do you mean that in terms of because Tottenham have been top of the league for the past yeah. nine weeks yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. of yeah, course I and obviously to, I'll take that. anything for Chelsea right now is a decent win any, any three points is a decent work we're bottom half of the table bro like yeah. we're yeah. we're 11th or 12th or t- we well we were 12th now we're 10th 12th. I think we're 10th now yeah, yeah, yeah. we were 12th so now I think we just jumped top half of the table but it's just not good enough. It's not good enough. enough in terms of the performance. Because you watched the match, did you? You watched, watched the match, the right? Full match, yeah, the full match, mate. Yeah. And it was just shite, just absolute <laughs> fucking shite. Like anybody looking at the result, they're going to be like, "What is Ricky trying about? His team won four one." Listen, my team won four one, right? But if you watched what I watched, it should have been fucking fifteen one. It should have been thirteen one. It should have been double digits or like at least a more six convincing goals result. from Nick Jackson at oh, least. Like it was just fucking least. bullshit. Yeah. You saw the header that he did as well. I like, saw it he all. Just glanced, it like, was how shocking. Did, how does a striker not put his head through that? We talk about like power and precision and accuracy, and this guy just like it just like fucking let it. Let he, I don't even know how to describe. I don't even have the words to describe what he did. So anyone listening, go out there and watch it. He kind of puts a gentle header towards the ball, and it just doesn't. And then what's his name? Hoiberg somehow clears it off the line. Hoiberg, yeah, yeah. And then acts like as if he's just saved. Did you see that World War Three or something? The way. Yeah, like what are you doing? Like. Fucking! If that gone past you, I would have been disappointed because there's literally no power in it. No, I think um, obviously, like I said, I watched the full match. I think do you know what we should do? We should put out the the whole group chat messages like just on Twitter <laughs> yeah, and just let people just like that go crazy. But you 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 know, I watched it and look. Hit me with hit me with what do you think of the uh, the the lineup first of all? Is this something that you know the lineup- you? I you was I was a or? bit like hey, yeah no to be I was expecting it uh, I like the idea that Cole will play left back again okay let's go cool. with that because sometimes cool. if Reese James is attacking we like to have three at the back so it's not too bad I need him he was he was at fault for the first goal but you yeah. know let's focus on the lineup alone I was like yeah this is probably our strongest eleven I agree going forward you know what I mean I know. Apart from Desassi, though, like there's something about that defender that you know he's he just is... played. He's just played the majority because the rest were injured. Because I think if Wesley Fofana was, uh, Where's Shield, by the way, Where's Buddy he? Shield come back from an injury, so he played a midweek against uh, Blackburn, and you won. Yeah, we won. Yeah, he scored, sheet, right? and he scored. Oh, there you go. <laughs> Buddy Shield scored as well. But so... it's it's just like I think players are slowly coming from injury. But one thing that disappointed me with this is the lineup I was like hold up what are we playing are we going 4-2-3-1 when have we played 4-2-3-1 before it was a 4-3-3 more than anything to be honest with well, you yeah but Conor Gallagher was quite high up I felt like Gallagher was a 10 and I was mm. like what are we actually doing here like what is going yeah. on and so Enzo was all over the place like that because Enzo when Enzo was a 10 can't do it he just can't hack it and no. today he didn't hack it neither today he I was, was expecting well. a lot more for him I was expecting go- that can you uh, like I said on the chart, that Q, Q, QB role for Enzo, but he just, nah, no, nothing, no. I think you should go nothing. through the lineup and I'll tell you what I felt about each player, by the way. Sanchez, uh, <laughs> he's the Sanchez. only goalkeeper, so like, let's just he's move the only one, straight, yeah. move straight past that. He kind of picks himself. Reese James, I know obviously, I know you said in the in the group chat that, proper you know, Chelsea, proper Chelsea and, and leader. <laughs> and look, it may be proper Chelsea, I just don't see him as a leader. I don't think he's got he's not the... Been consistent enough. That, no, no, it's yeah. not even the consistency. I just don't think he's got the the capability of being a leader he doesn't have the the sort of the the calm nerves to be a leader he's too chels you know what i mean he's too much of a chels guy as in like he will put his body on the line but not in the good sense of the word no, you know i what mean for me i hear I what you say i don't see for me, for me it's more like i like to see 
a John Terry, a Roy Keane, a Patrick Vieira, a Steven Gerrard, you know, the ones who kind of like play flirt with that fine line of over aggression yeah. and, and the right amount of aggression, like optimum level of aggression and slightly spilling over. And to be fair with him, he does all right. He goes there, he gets stuck in, he motivates the team. He was discussing, he came, spoke to the manager to be like, right, what's going on here? Because we need to do something. Yeah. And this was when we were down to 1-0. And I'm not saying this was just him, but then we seemed to get hold for the game a little bit, start passing a bit better, and we were pressing a little bit better. Because before, for those first 10 minutes, Jackson would press, nobody would follow. No Madison found space at left back and then passed the ball in the middle. No one was in the middle. I felt bad for Palmer. And then he scored the fair. goal. I felt bad for Palmer some... in that first yeah, 10 minutes because same, he was making them runs. He was pointing where he wanted the players to be. And again, look, he comes from a, from this a guy, Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, different. That's what I was going to say. My guy comes from a different, different from, education. He comes from a preppy school, you know what I mean? From like Yam or some shit. Like, yeah. you know, we're, we're, we're scum. Like. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my guys come all the way from Harvard over here you know exactly, I mean? exactly. He, he, he's got that Princeton education yeah, we're still talking about Teesside Union <laughs> um, yeah Oxbridge has got them both but uh, yeah look you know the, the 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 lineup itself when you see Colwell I, I, I was like you I, I thought yeah alright this is going to be a good lineup because he's a good player but unfortunately yeah. in today in tonight's match he was not good I fought for the first goal, even yeah, after, even, goal. even, even when Chelsea sort of, you know, put their shit, got their shit together, he still wasn't up to scratch. And I, I, again, I posted this on the group chat, and I should have made it more official. Where I should have said, I, I told my dad, I was like, right, he needs to go. Colwell is going, and Cucurella is yeah, coming on. To get that yellow, as soon yeah, as, yeah, that yellow card as well. I mean, the fact that he he kind of spat his dummy out a little bit. But then again, we didn't see much, did we? Because the camera, if you if you remember, the camera didn't actually show what happened behind with the yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because he was pointing at his throat, uh, Colwell, wasn't he? He was like, oh, don't push yeah, it. Yeah, I think, I think he got pushed in his throat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that's so, what he was trying to push out. And he even said to the referee, how am I getting a yellow card? I got yeah. pushed in the throat. He got, I mean, he, he again, he got a yellow card because he spat his dummy out. Even if even if yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. got a red card, Colwell still deserved a yellow card. Just, but, just No, 100%. 100%. Just, just you just that. don't do that. And this is in today's day and age. You can't react. You can't if react. If somebody does something to you, you can't get up and react and punch them all, no matter how much they deserve it to push or something <laughs> yeah the shit I'm literally just saying that like as I'm thinking it now I'll be like is there no self defence in this like is there nothing no. to be like but ref he came at me but there isn't and you can't do that and he got a yellow card and uh, too very much could have cost us well nowadays it's too soft I think it is it is it is you saw the challenges I thought by the way you mentioned on the chat as well but just to throw it out there for the listeners the referee had a very good game I felt I, I and I'm not saying that because year. he sent two players off but no, the no, two players that got sent off they well were deserving deserved. red cards a second yellow and a straight red for Romero but yeah going on the lineup itself I was like the strongest one there was nothing else we could have done Mudrick yeah. came back from injury so maybe you'd be like oh let's put Mudrick for pace mm-hmm. but Sterling's been playing well on the left back <laughs> no same <laughs> same per- Pereiro pretty much had him kind of on lockdown Poro he didn't really do Poro, Poro. No, yeah, that's Poro, his name, yeah. But Poro Poro about, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mr. Pedro think, Poro um, had him on lockdown he didn't really do much coming out but I think even the full team were just struggling to if this is going to sound daft, but like struggling to find the right space when they there were down no to space. nine men. There was no space. The, the space they, they, was behind and we were always close. overhit the ball. They were like the Chelsea players were clustered yeah, around just like, each other. And I'm thinking, how are you not spreading this game? Exactly. I didn't understand. And Sterling also, it was the only, only one point, by the way. Did you see when Cucurella ran from the back, from deep? Yes. And he got one on one. That's yeah. what we needed more of. Like, I didn't understand why Menzo's not running, why Caicedo's not running from deep. You know what I mean? Like, what's his name Jackson and Sterling so when we're looking at the line ready to make the run the ball would never come you even mentioned on the chat like Cole Palmer's attempted to make great runs here and the ball yeah. wouldn't come and that's Nothing. what I was disappointed at Enzo for because the space was there for him to kind of capitalise on it and he's a great passer of the ball bro just put a ball on the play for him and just get done and then it was Cole Palmer who put the pass on for Cucurella he great kind pass. of did what he wanted others to do for him but great like ball, we said he comes from that different education doesn't he yeah. so He's honestly, he is very, very impressive as a player, even though he was like a little bit quieter than than the previous games, but yeah. he was loud enough to make a difference. And he did. I mean, did he uh, that pass that he made for Nick Jackson? I think what was it, the third goal or something like that? Yeah, Where he passed yeah. from deep. Unbelievable. Where was he? He yeah. looked like he was right back or something. No, it was a terrific ball. It's incredible. Terrific ball. Absolutely. The only incredible. one thing for him to take his game further, I think he needs a bit more strength on him, like a bit, yeah. of, a slight bit more meat, a couple of pounds. Mm-hmm. He needs to put on maybe like a, a kilo or less like than a kilo. Yeah, something like that. a bit more, so he, yeah. he doesn't get out muscled from the ball. He did it today. It was a physical no, game. It was entertaining in terms of physicality, but yeah, moving forward against the proper big boys. 
proper big boys. No disrespect to Spurs. Right, you're coming up against City next. Do you know what I mean? City you're coming up against Newcastle City next. Are going so. away to some teams that are going to absolutely clatter into you. You just saw to what let Newcastle you know. did against Arsenal, yeah. which we will get to, by the way. At, we will, most you know, certainly. But, but, um, uh, oh, sorry, on Chelsea, real quick, I wanted to say, though, um, the players that didn't do it for me for Chelsea were what? definitely, obviously, we mentioned Colwell. Caicedo was just... No, <laughs> please don't ever. Apart from that strike, he did nothing else, did he? 120 million has gone to absolute fucking waste. And again, the fact, that, the, fact that, the fact that we're talking about his price tag, that only means one thing, that he hasn't been good enough. He hasn't been good enough, no, way, exactly. We've had nine episodes, uh, nine weeks of Premier League football, and not once have we ever mentioned Declan Rice's price no, tag. No, we haven't. We haven't mentioned and, his price and tag. And rightfully well. so, right? So no, he's, he's was, been fantastic. Yeah, Caicedo was poor. Um, for me, the best player on, on the pitch, or two best players on the pitch from both teams, by the way, I want to say it's Sterling and yep. uh, Vicario. They were just incredible. Vicario, he he was like he was like Neuer back in the peak. Prime Neuer, he, right? That's a great compliment wow. to give him as wow. well. Wow, it really is. And he did fantastically well. Like, you know, he, he didn't put a foot wrong. At the end, shit, the guy nearly got injured from the uh, from clattering uh, with uh, Mudrick, which again was, you know, was his fault really, it wasn't Mudrick's fault. Um, but yeah, he kept that, he kept Spurs in it to the very end, obviously no, until, the last, until the last few goal. minutes. But even those goals that he did. scored, he, they were like what you would discla- uh, describe on FIFA as sweaty goals. Sweaty goals, yeah. if they had a, If they had a chance to yeah. shoot... I think he would have said Nick Jackson wasn't good either, by the way. Yeah, he wasn't good. Jackson was awful. If anybody looks at him and goes like, oh, he got a hat trick and I can see like on social media. You don't know football. The TNTs and all them say Nick Jackson has done this. Like he was awful. He was literally awful. And even our friend said, uh, normal service resumed when he missed an absolute sitter. And yes. I even met, I've sent a voice note on the chat, one of many, but I sent it on the chat when I was like, even you look at Pochettino and he's about to lose his yeah, shit. He did. Then he, he realizes yeah, yeah, he's yeah. on the big screen and he's like, no, no, don't say anything. Yeah, yeah. And he kind of touches his assistant or who's to the right of him. He's like, don't say shit because you're on the screen. Yeah. yeah kind of yeah. like, sit down, sit down. Because yeah, like, how have you fucking not even hit the target, bro? Like, this guy needs to go back to the training pitch and he needs to work on clinical finishing. Yeah. I mean, um, you can't get you can't get goals like tonight every single no. match. You need to if fight. This won't happen again in the next four years. Next four years that Chelsea play against the team, they're not going down to ten men because nobody's men. that ill. Nine men, sorry, nobody's that ill-disciplined as Romero and Udogi or whatever his Udogi. name. Is. Udogi, like because Udogi, that first challenge, a two-footed one. If Raheem Sterling left a toe in there and then made a big deal out of it, he would have gone off. Come, but okay. because Raheem jumped out of the way, Raheem jumped out of the way, and he did it. He jumped. He went on the floor, but nobody from Chelsea made a huge deal because we're like he got the ball. Yeah. But regardless, that was very, very reckless. Two footed, reckless. Two-footed. He went in there to do damage, and I know our friend it? obviously compared it to Havertz, but that was no. I think that was more near. to pull your leg. I think that was more was pulling no your leg. Nah, not even close. Havertz, enough. like you, Havertz, again, one with one leg. Havertz, one yeah. with one leg. The only thing it's that cut the defense was the the was the trailing leg like the trailing real leg right, that's right. was the leg that kind of caught have it yeah it wasn't but, it uh, wasn't the full stretch leg no but again just the lack of discipline from Spurs tonight was shocking by the way even after they went down to 10 men they were still overly aggressive to the point where it's like are, are you kidding are you Andrew are you watching yeah. this match you need to tell you but like literally that was quite naive finished. wasn't it yeah half time finished and literally I said it downstairs not on the group chat again that's where it's official by uh, the way so, so people don't believe yeah, yeah, it's my, it's my. <laughs> this original uh, original thinking right now <laughs> but I literally half time came and I said to I said to dad I was like the first thing that Postacoglu needs to do right now is he needs to take his players in and be like, look, guys, we're down to, what is it, 10 men, 9 men at that point? 10, 10 men, men at that point, yeah. We're down to 10 men, you cannot go in the way that you've been going in because, you know, you will get sent another guy sent off. And there, there you go. Another guy got it sent did, off. Yeah. And yeah. it was two guys where Udogi got a yellow card early on and it was probably one of the worst things that he could do because he was up against some, like he was up against a Palmer. Do you know what I mean? Running towards him. And that's what Palmer did. He ran towards him and James ran towards him to the point where Doggy was like, do you know what? I can't handle this. And again, having one yellow card, what are you going to expect him to do? That's what he's, that's what's going to happen. No, that's it. It was when bad saw the other side, he kind of got him rid of him straight away. He saw Colwell get a yellow card and then got rid of Colwell right away. It, but yeah, you're right. It, it is, it is to be fair, bad management. It was. Again, who is he going to put on? Eric came on, <laughs> which is crazy because Eric, I mean, no one named Eric is going to win anything, as I've already said. Ollie Skip came on, Bentancur came on. He had he had a decent, 
like whatever it was 30 minutes or whatever the hell it was but it was poor mate it was really Eric- poor like it was entertaining to watch in terms of like as a neutral and probably like a bit of not even, i don't even want to say end to end it was just because chelsea this is another thing as well a lot of us going to mention it we were playing counter-attacking football against the nine men yeah <laughs> literally nine men would try to play counter-attack in football rather than pressing them and and the thing is we continued to keep four at the back and i was like yeah. how are four people defending that. son here Duke Corella came on by the Listen, way then that I know, changed. I know we respect sonny but like what is going on here like yeah. why are we doing this and then a way there i blame the manager a little bit tactically and look at it and it was a bit scared. prepare these scenarios i know they might come once every four years but prepare for the scenarios yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Um, I, I don't think I think Pochettino was a little bit scared because obviously he's 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 had Son as his player, so he. I thought I thought he was a bit scared to be honest to make the changes uh, quick enough, and like you said, Colwell. Yes, he took him off, but I feel like he should have took Colwell off a lot sooner. Uh, Cucurella came on, game changed. Obviously, Cucurella was. Um, he moved into that sort of like, you know, that little Zinchenko role into that midfield yeah, yeah. to make that run. De Sassi stayed back um, with Thiago Silva, which, by the way, it doesn't matter how old that guy is. He is incredible. He reads the game. This is when experience and knowing what to do. No, he was. He was fantastic. He was a rock. And I think this whole thing started when Romero chased his own ball. Yeah. Do you remember at the very beginning Mm -hmm. that Thiago Silva gave him a little little shoulder to shoulder, but Thiago came on top. And then that's when he kicked out uh, Colwell. Yeah. And we were like, red card. Why did he do that? And again, the referee let it go. The referee let it go. We're like, fine, okay, yellow, amber, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And in a way, I'm glad he let it go because it didn't spoil the game. And I know I'm a Chelsea fan. I'm watching the game, but at the end of the day, I want to be and ent- I want to win, and I want to be entertained at the same time. Yeah. And that's something that hasn't happened for Chelsea since the takeover. And but, the uh, wasn't because it was good football from either team. No, it was. It was just you no. Know, it was like that violence, that drama, that sort of physicality. Did you see the, uh, the, the meme that, that I sent you? I sent on the group chat with the <laughs> Royal Rumble. That's literally what. <laughs> that's literally what it was. And, yeah, uh, no, I think. Uh, look, the the Chelsea again, like you said, for the neutral, it was very exciting. And I'm not a Chelsea fan, as you know. Um, you are well, a Spurs is, hater. I am a Spurs hater. So there's a big difference. <laughs> to be fair, in what there's I'm a lot saying. of people who could not have happened to a better team and yeah. a better player. The red card that he got straight away, oh, and the penalty, God. and his team losing four one because of him. I feel. And, I and feel responsible. Ended, by, Angers, the way. by the way, do you know that? And Ang- they've ended Angers. Uh, what is it? Home record. He's never been beaten at home yeah. anywhere he's managed. That has gone out, and he can thank Romero how, for that as well. I don't know. I don't and know the how fact that Spurs were unbeaten, he can thank Romero for that as yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, look, I feel responsible for Romero being sent off because every time I watch, feel right. <laughs> every time I watch Spurs, I know that this guy's going to get sent off, and maybe it's just me and my eyes, and maybe, he knows maybe. that I'm watching. He's like, he's under pressure or something. He's listening to the podcast, and he's like, "Oh shit, Larry's talking shit about me." And maybe don't off. watch the next three games. Next three games, don't watch Spurs, and he might not get sent off. No, but I need to watch Spurs so he can get sent off so they can lose. No, he's not going to play the next I, three I, games. He's not, he won't point. be there because he got straight red. Good point. Good point. Red. I think uh, I think he should for, for that challenge. By the way, I genuinely think he should get a five match back. Of course, he should against his fucking countrymen as well. He won the World Cup with fucking Enzo, a 21 year old. Did you see what he did to him at a 21 year old? Like, I think what he tried to do is, like, I'm going to try and, like, uh, rattle you. I'm going to go hard on you. So when you come hard on me, then I'm going to get you sent off. And it just backfired. And I'm so glad it backfired because it could be again. He he's an awful his leg. Yeah, no, he's awful. Absolutely awful. awful. He, you, the thing is, if you watch that replay, right, you can see him sort of <sighs> cock his leg to the point where he's yeah. ready to launch it I on know. him. And I, I think, I think uh, Michael Oliver, obviously, I think he just saw that scene of Romero's face and he was like, right, he's going because that was just shambolic. <laughs> well, even only to, asking, not only to he's... another professional, by the way, but like you said, to his fellow countrymen that he did that to. Yeah, Shocking. Disgusting, bro. He's yeah. one of honestly one of the worst defenders in the league in terms of discipline because he that's it yeah he's hot headed yeah. he's very he's hot-headed. so hot headed yeah it's he not can't. good that is not good because I, I think, think Reese James is a bit hot headed but not to the point of where he'll do shit like that against yeah. and against I think I think country. with James he used to do that very quickly did, him. Did, recently yeah. recently now I think maybe injury and being made captain and so captain, on yeah. he realizes I can't let the team down the way that some players do. And that's yeah. something with Romero. He just, like you say, he's so hot-headed. He plays on that edge. If not even on the edge, he's so far past the edge. He yeah. just goes and does their challenges. And when the fans were booing, when they saw it on the big screen, they are like, oh, he got the ball first. But then what did he do after? He lit, He was knee-high challenge. Yeah. It, literally, he could have ruined his career. If there was any <laughs> high, I caught him on the patella, I caught him on the knee joint itself. It could have really, really ruined his uh, it, Well, it could have injured him. 
as simple as that as the force that he's came through and it yeah. caught him on the knee yeah it's, it's for me for me it's a straight red just from the fact that he cocked his leg back the way that he did like you yeah. know what i mean yeah, yeah like you're winding up and ready yeah, to go exactly, for it yeah. exactly exactly it he's was winding his leg ready to go is, if you if you watch it back or if you watch son going up to the ref you can see michael oliver explaining like yeah, son, yeah, it looks like, it's up here yeah it's up here mate. you can't come on son was like i'm guessing he was saying no that he got the ball first and blah 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 yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. going through someone's knee mate <laughs> you know yeah, you can't it, it. it doesn't work like that so yeah i think um yeah it was it was and i've said it in many many podcasts this season i just don't think spurs are a good team i really don't and today proved it nine men 11 men they were shit yeah, they were absolutely yeah. garbage but again they may, they were made to look good because chelsea were even worse chelsea have been you, awful wouldn't like close, think, you, yeah. you wouldn't finish your chances nick jackson what is he doing <sighs> hey, hey, look i know we, we touched on that this so we don't go any more any further onto it but like you know, you, you're a striker. I understand our oh, rawness and young and this and that. Bro, you are in the Premier League. You're playing for Chelsea Football Club and you are the main striker. What are you talking about? I do not want to hear any more excuses. If if that's an excuse that he lives by, where it's like, oh, I'm still young and I'm raw and all this shit. Sit down. Sit on the yeah, bench. Yeah, exactly. Sit down. Sit Bring on the bench. Bring back. I think Armando's yeah. injured, but I would have preferred to have seen Breuer on instead of him. At least after the first two misses from Nick Jackson. Yeah, I think Breuer should have came on. Bro, you even saw how Walker did. <laughs> Even with one like <laughs> cast on and running around. Now, do you see how awkward he was when he scored his third goal? I genuinely thought he's going to lose it. I genuinely thought he's lost the ball there. Like, you know, that feeling for a split second. Of course, he scored back and seemed to take it past the keeper. But when he seems to stop and jerk, and, and I'm thinking, like, what is this guy doing? And then he scores something. And I, oh, thank fuck for that. It's, it's, it's more of a sigh of relief rather than a celebration. It's more <laughs> yeah. like of a. Ah, oh, thank fuck for that. That's why he celebrated like, that hard. Come on. That's why he celebrated that hard because honestly he knew. Yes. But he thought it was Michael Jackson with his leg twitching. Do you know what I mean? John no, it's fucking like, weird. Hey, like, okay. just listen, yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's just fucking weird as well because Raheem Sterling put the ball on the play for him. He just tapped it and he celebrated as if he was yeah. a creator. He, was like, and he celebrated as if he did the Terry and Regal when he ran from halfway line. I'm like, yeah. And then he tried to do the Superman opening the chest and the Ronaldo Sue. And I was thinking, like, bro, sit down. All You've of them. Fuck all. You've literally rushed for celebration. He did Bellingham celebration. You know what it is as well? It's the little hype men that Chelsea have at the minute. All the boys who have come this summer. So the the, the Sassy, Jackson, uh, Chukumenka. Chukumenka came last year. Ugo Chukumenka, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Wow. And it's these players there like who seem to have one to hype each other. Obviously, we've got Lavia as well, who's been injured for so long and he's not there. Onguku. Wait, so you, you, have, you have Lavia? Yeah, love you. Yeah, he's at Chelsea. We got injured him. Has an uncle who like retired for football or some shit? Uncle who's also injured. So every time I keep up on that, it says doing their, their individual rehabilitation program. Ben Chilwell's <laughs> in America doing his rehabilitation program. Ah, he had to have surgery. Miami. So there's injuries. There's some players coming back, but this performance to me, nowhere does it mean Chelsea are back, Chelsea are this, Chelsea are that. Because for me, it was it wasn't a performance that I'd be proud of, even against ten or nine, or even you it know wasn't. eleven or ten. It's or even nine. worse the fact that you were against nine, nine players, against and nine, and we like that. We, yeah, I wasn't very impressed. How, in can a way, you, can you, you can only beat what's in front of you, but at the same time, I was expecting a lot more. I was expecting a lot more creativity. We had so much pace that we did not use. Just you explain to me doing. why your team was sat that far back against nine men. I just need to know. I just want to know, like an excuse, <laughs> raw. <laughs> Young, <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking the <laughs> bench the fucking lot of them. <laughs> bench the fucking lot of them. No, I think um, honestly, it. maybe maybe one or two, but the rest of them. Honestly, I just did not understand why. Again, especially nine. Let's say ten, okay, because ten is only one man down, and, he, yeah. and they still look dangerous with ten. Don't get me they wrong; did, they, they still did, look very they dangerous. Yeah. When he got to nine, Spurs were very naive to play that such a high line while it was one-one, and. Yeah. And really should have said, actually, do you know what, lads? Let's sit this one tight. Let's take this. Let's take the one-one. It's going to be a shit game, but we can't do nothing else but because see, of the situation is, we're being put in. See, this is where I mean, Rick. Sorry to interrupt. By the way, see, this is where I mean about Ange and the Spurs team. I just, I, I think he probably has run out of ideas. He doesn't have any variations to what he does. From what I've seen, by the way, again, I could yeah, be yeah. wrong. Shit, I haven't watched all the Spurs matches. It's but not like you've been watching Spurs, yeah. No, I get you guys, but I'm just saying from what I've seen, even in highlights or even parts of games and tonight's game, just proved it. Like, prove my point. Yeah, they they yeah, are not like a good team. No tactics there. 
No, there isn't. And again, you can't just rely on, all right, everyone go forward, follow Sun. Like, if Sun gets gets squashed down or he sort of gets defended, that's it. Who else you got? Yeah. Kulusevski well, can't do shit. Even, if Son, even Son can't have done anything without the creativity of uh, Madison. And it looks exactly. like he's injured. There you, go. there you go. He's injured. The two centre-backs are out. So the main thing for Spurs now, we'll see what they're going to do next weekend. Yeah. I think they're dropping. Oh. I think they're going to drop some points in the, in the upcoming weeks. I'll be honest with you. I think they're playing Watford next. Oh, Wolves, sorry, it's Wolves. Wolves next. Yeah, I, honestly, yeah. I think they'll lose points. Uh, whether it's whether it's the full three yeah, points. Or two well, or if two anything, or like, whoever watches the game needs to know this is how Chelsea play. So let's go play the same way. Let's sit well. tight for fifteen minutes. No, but in the sense of let's sit tight for the first fifteen minutes and don't don't concede like Chelsea did. Yeah. But then after that, if you're gonna press, press with numbers. Don't press with one or two players. Press with a four, five. Actually, press, not just be like, hey, I'm chasing the ball down. This is lovely. No, bro, like fucking yeah. run that and close the players down. There and was I no urgency in that first game. Like he'll we'll see that and he'll do something. He'll do something. It'll be an so. interesting game. He's but a good, he's a good manager. Time, I like it's him going so. to be interesting to see what Spurs does, knowing the ch- shit we've chatted about them, mm-hmm. how are they going to bounce back from this? Because there's a lot of things going on in that changing room tonight. Yeah. Yeah. And a lot of players are going to be pointing fingers. They might not do it physically. But internally, they'll be thinking, we lost that because of you. Because of you. Or if there's anybody like close clicks, like in any work of life, like in any job, you know, you've got group chats within your really good mates and you're like, oh, it's fucking Sandra's fault. Oh, yeah. we did this. And it'll be the same thing. It'll it's be Romero's fault. Yeah. It'll be so and so. You'll get a fault. message from his teammates, uh, like on his way home or something like that. You know what I mean? Drop me a message. But, mate, you're a cunt, mate. What are you talking about? But no, you're right, because one player ruined the whole game. And, yeah, did, well, two players did. in this case. But Udogi obviously got a second yellow. But Romero, my God, man. Every time I watch him, I just, like, you know, I just want to, I feel like, I feel like, like slapping him in the face just to be like, are you real? Are you a real person right now? And I don't think he is. I don't think he's a real person. That's, that's the fucking problem. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, good, good result in the end for you guys. And um, I'm glad, obviously, that you won. Obviously, that can stop right now, though. So, I'll see. <laughs> Go back to you. <laughs> Normal service resumes. Yeah, Thanks you did us a favor. Place, so, thank you. you very much. You and Luton, thank you. Um, you've been great. But, yeah, uh, but yeah look, I, I just don't think how, how sustainable that Chelsea performance is. And I know it won't. I know, I, I know it isn't. It isn't at all. But like you said, you can only do what you can do with the players that you have at your disposal. And unfortunately, some of those players players or most of those players like ugh, you know you've been chatting shit about sterling you know for all of last season but again sterling's been your best player so far yeah but he's changed hasn't he like if you yes, know what you. i've been saying like sterling today running once or people. twice he was just taking his time yeah. and passing like you said yeah running at people this is all i've been crying out for is raheem sterling for city when he was got the ball and ran i don't care if you lose it bro just run just like run with modric i don't get yeah, angry when modric loses it because i'm like bah. just keep running <laughs> no but you get angry i don't get angry i'm no, like no, just no, keep no, going no. bro because i know it, i know he might come he'll come he'll only take <sighs> five runs and one of them to be pulled off and all of a sudden it's an assist and we're winning one no oh, I know, man, but like but again, you watch, you watch this. You watch this focus player. Focus on Sterling. Focus. No, wait, two Sterling. seconds. <laughs> no, 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 no. You brought him up. You brought him <laughs> up. Right. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> listeners, right? He brought him up, so I'm gonna have to like you know attack him a little bit. Um, look, the thing is with with Mudrick, he's got the speed, and again, I was personally. I was crying out for him, especially when they went down to nine men. I was crying out for, for yeah, Mudrick because yeah, they needed that. Obviously, he switched, he moved Sterling to the right. Mudrick came on the left, but right. You know, I'm just going to repeat what I said to you on the group chat. If he's worth 100 million, I'm at least worth seven, right? I don't have the speed. Fair enough. I know I've got better vision than he does, and I know I've got a better pass than he does. That's it. I don't have anything else, but honestly, yeah, no. he, he's, seven he's, million, he's, he's, put me in for Mudrick. I will spray balls to Palmer, to child. Sterling. Shocking, say, but shocking yeah, player. He didn't have much help, to be fair, though. Man. Yeah, when it, Sterling was on that side, he had Conor Gallagher for showing short. That motherfucker needs Jesus. Man, to get down the line. <laughs> this, this guy did, uh, this guy, every time he got the ball, he got double teamed by Bentancur and Poro. And it, I felt a bit sorry for him at times because it kind of, this, oh, like, oh, you're fast. They've got a high line. So you were able to kind of just break it down and keep going. And he didn't need to. They didn't need to put so much power on the ball. Because to be fair, he could have scored a goal today. If that ball that he, where he fouled the keeper, because he had to go for that challenge as well. If that ball didn't have that much pace on it, because our crossing was awful, by the way. It Anytime was, we tried to put the ball in the space, it was awful. Apart from Palmer and James, by the way. Palmer and James did two passes, which probably led to goals and assists, but other than that, nothing else. I mean, they, sorry, they did the their job, right? Just shit, just shite. But yeah, exactly. So again, you say to yourself, keep trying, keep trying. 
and then something will come through. I've just watched the highlights of the challenge again. I just think to myself, why would you do that in this middle of the box to cause your team such heartache? It's crazy. And he has, he's literally caused them heartache because they'll be few in the Spurs fans. Yeah, I, anyway, I agree. Moving on to the full Chelsea performance, it literally means fuck all. Uh, yeah. We weren't great. We'll play next weekend against City. We'll probably look a little bit more dangerous on the counter, but City have got fast wingers, so it might not even look that dangerous. He'll probably cancel everything that we have to offer. But then again, he does have a good good record against Guardiola. He does. He does. Poch has a good record against Guardiola, so it'll be an interesting game next Sunday. But uh, knowing Guardiola, by the way, you know he's gonna he's gonna overthink no, that match. If he overthinks, that much, yeah. he overthinks because he'll be like, "Oh, okay, they were poor against Tottenham, so we don't have to play that well." But yeah, it's like, you yeah. know, all it takes is all it takes is literally like one match to change the perspective of things. You know what I mean? And this, by the way, was not it for Chelsea. Um, I'm just saying, if they if they obviously beat City, then yeah, that could be like, oh shit, confidence, everyone's buzzing, and then you lose against Luton the week after. Um, <laughs> we won't be losing. It'll be fucking Newcastle the week Sorry, after. Whatever it is, my bad. Yeah, my bad. Yeah, no, no, he, he's been losing Newcastle, by the way. The Newcastle-Chelsea game is at three o'clock. It's not even going to be shown on telly. Why is that game not on? Who's uh, who's the later one? I have no idea, but I'm just looking because I'm just looking at the Chelsea tactics, and it said Newcastle Chelsea three o'clock, mm-hmm. Chelsea City uh, six forty mm-hmm. sixteen forty sorry for uh, for Sunday kickoff. But now listen, overall for Chelsea, decent result in terms of like getting the three points. Oh, by the way, while I'm on the three points, this goes to show that Gary Frank Lampard was right. White Hart Lane is called three point lane. Because every time Chelsea goes, like they get three points. Oof, okay, it. maybe not in the recent history, but it's all right. in the recent history, I mean, it's like in the five years or something, but like in a couple of decades, Chelsea have always gone to White Hart Lane and took some points. Yeah, I mean, I think to the point where even Tottenham changed the name of their stadium, by the way, from White Hart Lane to Tottenham Stadium three or whatever. Like, <laughs> toilet ball, crap, whatever the fuck. But uh, no, um, obviously... By the way, and striker very know, quickly, because I'm saying we need a striker, right? And I'm going to obviously transition this to something else because I don't have anything else to talk about Chelsea. Unless I just wanted do. to say, real quick before you do that, I just wanted One to minute. say, right, I can't believe there was four goals disallowed. <laughs> Fucking hell, I know, right? But every single yeah, one of those right. calls was perfect. Like, I can't, was, I can't be mad at any of those. Yeah, no, same. Yeah, we'll say it again just before you carry on, by the way. Anthony, uh, Anthony Oliver? No, Michael Oliver had Michael a, Oliver, amazing, he fantastic. amazing yeah, He was match. really, really good. He, I think he should be like the model of Premier League yeah, refereeing right now because he let, he let go a lot of challenges, a lot of 50-50s. Even if he was 60-40, he was like, nah, get up, you'll be all right. Just get up. Because yeah, Anthony get Taylor, up. by the way, he's been demoted. He's yeah, gone down no, to the, he's gone down to the championship. Championship. So. Fucking oh, hell. Bad game. Okay. Stuart Allen well, should do the same. In a, way, in a way, that needs to happen in order for referees to maybe pull yeah. a finger out. Like if players are being punished for red cards and mistakes that they make, and it is a mistake you're making a red card, you're like, oh, sorry, ref. It's too late now. What did you I say? Four like, episodes ago, we said this. You know, yeah, we're talking about referees. Exactly if you're going to apologize, do, yeah. you need to get rid of the refs, mate. Something needs to happen. Yeah, and absolutely. They did. So and not only get rid of them when they're outside of the limelight or not refereeing. Make him referee at a lower league. I championship. It's a great league, but still, it's an embarrassing being to like. Do you know what? I've been demoted. And we're talking about Anthony Taylor, itself, by the way. We had one of the best. Wow, incredible! But, uh, no, so what I was going to go into. So strikers, Chelsea need strikers, and obviously, well, Arsenal need a striker again because <laughs> yeah. Ketis, or, you know where I'm going with this, yeah. right? Just do so, it. <laughs> what the hell's going on? Why on earth do they want a hundred million for Ivan Tony for a player who scores goals, but majority of them were penalties? If you take the penalties out. Brentford are like, oh yeah, we're not going to sell him for less than eighty to hundred million. I, I, wait, isn't this deja vu? Did I already comment on this? Like, you commented on this, bro. But like, is now at first it was a rumor. Now it's starting to get traction. <laughs> now I, this is cool. Running's are going down. I can't believe a player doesn't. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> let me just rephrase that. A player gets banned from football for doing illicit footballing things, i.e., betting. Right. Yeah. You get banned for 10 months. You don't play a fucking single second of football for that long. And now you're telling me that this guy is worth 100 million. I, I you can see my arms up, right? Like, I can see your arms up. Yeah, this is calm, but like, I'm just <sighs> noises. No, nah, he's, he's for, me, for me, he's not worth 100 million. 35, 40 mil tops. 35, yeah, 40 tops. You're right. Tops. Absolutely and right. The reason it's for that, I say that is, yes, the football and betting and stuff, but even the goal scoring, like he's got aerial threat. 
majority of his goals were penalties. Take yeah. them away. His return is not that great. No. Now, okay, no. maybe he could be. But then again, if you're looking at maybe he could be, you can say like, well, maybe this could be or maybe that. You know, if you go down the ifs and buts and maybe Chelsea have got a, a whole squad of ifs and buts and maybes. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> took the words out of my mouth. That is literally my current team, ifs, buts and maybes. Young and raw. <laughs> By the way, new title for the episode tonight, if, buts and maybes. If Equal Chelsea maybe, team. Fucking love it. <laughs> fucking love it. But uh, no, that's literally, and I can't even deny it. When you're talking facts, you're talking facts. But uh, for me, yeah, that's a five and Tony. I'd definitely not. I'd like to think go somewhere else and see if we can bring somebody else in. I agree. Uh, how old is he, by the way? He's like 32 or something. Yeah, he's old. He's old. But I don't even think he's million. Like, mind you, I think he's about 26, and I don't think he's that old. But I think no, it's old. Oh, you know I think you're right now. He's 26. About prime, uh, prime. It sounds right now that you said 26, by the way. I think that, that makes more sense. Yeah, no, I don't I don't know. Again, for me, it's not really... I, I was crying before, but for 40 million, yes. For 100 million, no. I know a couple of episodes I said he'd be ideal signing for Chelsea because he's got power, strength, decent scorer, clinical, etc. But, you know, not 100 simply, million clinical. No, no, no. Let's, let's oh. not get carried away for 100 million. He is will 27. Pay it, but, uh, he will pay it, yeah. He's 27 year old. And yeah. here's a fun fact for you, right? He shares the same birth as my wife. Does he? Yeah. <laughs> so people out there, if uh, now you know my wife's birthday, please do send in presents. <laughs> yes, do send them in. Do send 20, them in. Uh, 27, look, 27, again, not, that doesn't mean that you can justify 100 million for him at all. No chance. No, no. But no. It, it's, again, when, you, when, when strikers are in that much demand as they are now, you kind of have to think like, you know, you, you, you kind of have to pay it. Do you know what I mean? It's if you've got no other choice, yeah. But the choice. Simple, like just if, but you, you know what? Look, look like, elsewhere. Do something it? else. Yeah, look somewhere else. Because a dive and Tony will be a hundred million, but a Toninho will probably be twenty five. Like exactly. you know the whole Declan Rice meme that you send around when he was hundred and fifteen and Ivan Tony you know, Tony Vov. Yeah, of course, Tony man. Vov yeah, yeah these, you know what I mean? That it can happen. So you just need to, we just need to find a striker. Chelsea just Chelsea are a striker away from being a, a top four side, I think. If because defensively we do not, it's just we're not being clinical enough in front of goal. You saw today. He, my guy had three chances and was still one nail down. I no, no. I, 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 like, I totally agree with the striker situation, but I think I think you've got other issues as well. To be honest, I mean, your left back. Uh, so, not not yeah, left back. Sorry, not my back. Because Cole, Cole, Cole was doing all right. Actually, Cole, Cole, Cole was doing all right. Cole right. Chilwell will play. Was doing all right. Yeah. Injury Cook prone. Was, uh, maybe you need to yeah. come on. Don't don't. I not. think the injury prone things that happen with him is he's always been rushed. He hasn't actually had the time to have surgery and get it correctly yeah. fixed rather than just kind of okay a bit of rehab right let's get you back because i don't know whatever's going on behind the scenes these players should not be rushed back Same no, how much uh, how much time is it, james how much time is todd bowley, season, you know what I'm saying? How much time is todd bowley willing to give him like injuries no injuries you know what i mean how much that time we don't know, we don't know, but, but what's going to happen is ideally with todd bowley again very quickly on it he needs to take a step back and be like do you know what Poch I've employed you for that you yeah. can crack on with that kind of stuff I don't the need guy to do manage PSG yes I think uh, I think I think so you're right um, but no, I th- but no he needs to if he's going to bring him regardless who he's managed if he's going to bring him in to do a managerial job he needs to allow him to manage yeah. do you know what I mean rather I than be like no I need you to do this or don't give him this contract listen you deal with the finances I want this player in the player's going to be like I want 500 million it's not up to the Pochettino to go no. I'm not giving you 500 no. Todd Bowley with the agent somebody else can organise that what's up to Pochettino is to be like you play this week and you don't play go get your rehabilitation fixed because I need you back in six yeah. months time fully managing, fit yeah. managing I need you back players exactly and yeah. managing players managing the situation the training the tactics who, who comes in and out of the changing rooms rather than Todd trying to do his own thing but yeah but no, I'm cautious for time as well because we've been talk- trying a lot no, no, Chelsea, um, but, uh, I was going to say last thing on Chelsea um, I think I think Gallagher I've, I know I've, I've I've said a couple of times that he's been alright but I just after tonight's match even with against nine men he was honestly he was swayzy nah, by that I mean he was he ghost was yeah, nah, <laughs> he wasn't great at all he wasn't great at all uh, and one thing I did like about him that I put on the chat as well is just him being physical with him because yeah. I felt like as, at first we were just being bullied off the ball the ball would come in we were just getting hammered off the ball and uh, I think he started going in a little bit because what was his name? Moses Caicedo made so many mistakes. I even put a group chat, 300 million in midfield. All we three can't of put your, two yeah. passes together. Yeah. All three of your midfielders, by the way, were poor today. Like Caicedo, Gallagher, awful. and yeah, uh, and, and Enzo. Absolutely awful. awful. I did not like that. So this is what I mean, like with uh, obviously saying striker, but I, I just don't, I can't, Enzo doesn't fill me with confidence, mate. Like Because A, he has, they haven't found the right See, position for him. The thing for him is, if he, played great, last, if he played like that at the beginning, do you know when we're like, oh, Enzo looks good? Or even last year when he came in halfway yeah. through, we're like, Enzo looks good. 
good. And Enzo's got a good pass. Enzo's got this. Do we? My question now is: Could it possibly be because he doesn't trust the players that are in front of him? To be like, there's no point giving you the ball. You're just going to lose it. So I might as well just pay, pay, play a five yard pass. I might do this. So maybe if he has better players around him, he might do those spraying. Today was the opportunity. I totally agree because today there was a lot of space behind, and he got a it wrong a couple of times, and then he kind of like from Spurs, chickened yeah. out of the passes. But uh, there was a space mistake, but I meant, the, yeah, Spurs, Spurs were awful in terms of playing. That's such a high line, and that's yeah. eventually cost them 4-1. That's all they've got. But, no, that's you're right. We'll see, we'll see what we do against City, against better opposition, see what Cole Palmer can do then as well, proper test against Oxbridge, and yeah, then see oh, how, yeah. how much that education he's going back. To, yeah, he's going back to, gonna the, do. Uh, to the alumni, isn't he? Yeah, yeah he's going back to, to the alumni. Oh, they're coming over for him. Oh, yeah, that's but, it. That's uh, it. It's going to be interesting to see because Carl Walker is quick, and if we try to play counter attack in football, it doesn't matter who's playing against that left wing. Yeah, they're not quicker than Walker. No, 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 no. Unless you have Vinicius Jr. who have got quality and speed and touch and composure, and then... I just hope that Poch doesn't spot. overthink overthink the, uh, the City match because I don't think he should. I don't think he really should. Um, the, <laughs> again... I'm not saying that City have got weak players. Like most of the players, if not all the players, are just you know top notch, right at the yeah, top of the game. Yeah. You saw what Doku did on the weekend. Oh. He just tortured, absolutely tortured the defense. Like what? He just like he wasn't even there. It was yeah, incredible, it was incredible, incredible nice. to see. And uh, Bournemouth wasn't it? Was it against Bournemouth? Yeah, against Bournemouth. Yeah. Well, yeah but isn't mean, that big of the question? Be like, what the hell were Chelsea and Arsenal looking at Makai Mudrik when Doku was just over Doku the pond? Yeah, yeah. Because Pep's already told him that. Look, mate, you need to you need to close yeah. all your social medias, Ray. You do not exist until <laughs> the season. Coming, <laughs> yeah. After this season, you're coming over to us. You're probably it. right. And there might be some truth in that. Another star in the making, I feel. Um, obviously, Haaland and Alvarez had a bit of a quiet game, but, you know, very good players. And so this is just for, in preparation for Chelsea's match, which I know we'll have another podcast to discuss yeah. a bit further. But, yeah, I mean, look, on Chelsea tonight, I'm not a fan. As Again, I will stress that out, but I felt like I was a fan because of the way I was reacting to the <laughs> mispasses, to the tackles that were going in, to the space that they were leaving. It, you know, it, I felt part of it. And then as soon as the match finished, you know, whatever it was, 99th minute, all right, that's it. Fuck Chelsea. Yeah, fuck Chelsea. So, yeah. Lose every game. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, look, I, I, don't, I don't have anything else to add on the match. Um, overall, it was entertaining. Um, level of football was shocking. And yeah, I'll just give the entertaining factor of it. I'll give yeah. it a 9 out of 10. To be fair, if that Sun goal counted, it would have been a different different result because it would have been 2 nil up. And luckily he was offside because that was a wonderful play by Spurs for me. You mean, I felt like, you mean Dyer's goal, right? Uh, no, no, Son scored and it was 2 0 to make it 2 0. Yeah, yeah, Dyer made it 2 2 because yeah, I just yeah. sent on the group chat. Imagine if they equalised and they went and equalised. Yeah, I, did it again, I, did it again. I was talking too much shit about Eric, bro. Fuck, bro. Like, there you go. But now it's finished. It's finished. But yeah, let's make it. Let's jump on the tube and get to Houston and get quickly jump on London, the LNER. London forever. Okay. We're making um, our way all the way up. All there, so the way up there. London North East right. Rail, all the way to the tune. The yeah, next stop like is stops. Newcastle. <laughs> um, look. If you're anything like me, my headwear is only New Era caps. New Era is the official headwear provider for NFL, MLB, and the NBA. But New Era caps are not just headwear. They are a global brand of culture, style, and self-expression. I'm a huge fan of rap and hip-hop, and growing up, I used to watch artists spot in the New Era caps. I was mesmerized by the way they used to fit just perfectly. I remember my first ever New Era cap. It was a Blue Jays cap. I lived in Toronto, so it had to be. My favorite from my personal collection is my LA Dodgers. I have two different versions, fitted and the 940. What I love most about New Era is the quality of the product is second to none. I refuse to wear any other brand caps when New Era is available. So if you want to dress like your favorite sports stars and musicians, visit the official website neweracap.com and use the code TASHMIKE at checkout for 15% off. That's neweracap.com and use the code TASHMIKE for 15% off. Please ask for help because it's an absolute disgrace that this goal is allowed. It's an absolute disgrace. Why? Because it's not a goal. For many reasons, it's not a goal. For more than one reason, at least, it's not a goal. And it's too much at stake here. We put so much effort. It's so difficult to compete at this level. And it's an absolute disgrace. Again, I feel embarrassed. I've been more than 20 years in this country, and this is nowhere near the level to describe this as the best league in the world. I am sorry. Bro, 
I, what you mm. think and talk to me. So obviously the lineup came out. No, no Odegaard. Havertz playing up top. Jorginho playing. These two players that you got from Chelsea's. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Spy. What is it when you're d- double agents? Mm-hmm. Chelsea's double agent department. And look, how are you feeling on that? Rick, because you were quite vexed yesterday. I'm not going to lie. I've, I've, listen, you're my boy. I love you for that, but I found it hilarious. I kept giggling on my phone. My wife was like, "What's wrong with you?" And I was like, "Lawrence is biting like <laughs> Larry's biting, biting, biting." I was biting like a bastard, by the way. <laughs> like you know, like fucking macro shit. But to be fair, I'll be honest with you. Like I didn't tell you this on the tech uh, on the group chat because I wanted to save it for the pod. I'd have felt as well because if that goal went against my team, I'd have been fucking fuming. I, okay, look, you asked you asked about the lineup first. I'll just quickly wrap yeah, through that. Straight um, to that. And again, this is this is hindsight, by the way, because if we had this as a predicted lineup, I probably would have said similar, apart from Jorginho, obviously, or uh, and Havertz or Odegaard would have played. So for me, um, in hindsight, Raya, my God, as much as as much as I'd like to blame VAR for that goal, Raya flapped. Mm-hmm. He flapped. That's a set. That was the second time that he found himself in pretty much no man's land. Absolutely right. yeah. no one yeah. around him. He finds himself in that space, and I'm thinking, what in the name are you doing? Because you can. You, I'm sure you can see the ball, right? He's got eyeballs, right? I know he's got <laughs> eyeballs because I've seen he's got eyeballs. And for, for the life of me, I'd never. I just didn't understand what he was doing in that space where yeah. literally anything could happen, and it did that anything it actually happened the worst of it happened uh ryan goal and you know whatever obviously uh tommy asu started instead of zinchenko i was happy with that i really enjoyed that on the left yeah, I, was gonna say, um, I, I really like tommy asu he's a good player and again played very well against newcastle um saliba gabriel they picked themselves ben white picks himself didn't have a good game by the way ben white did not have a good game he, he obviously he got he got hooked off at uh was it after half time but uh, in midfield, Jorginho, <sighs> come on, Georgie, come on, Horgi, yeah, yeah. I, I know, ah. I know, I've been there. Ah. I've been there when I've seen those Horgi <laughs> performances, and I'm like, how is this possible? Yeah, I think with uh, with Jorginho, the problem that he had against Newcastle was the fact that he didn't have that level of support to move to move the ball forward. He sort of felt responsible to take the ball and then move it forward because Havertz obviously was doing his own free roaming shit somewhere else. Um, and again, I don't think Havertz had a bad game. I don't think he had a bad game. I don't think he influenced it in the right way, but I don't think he had a very bad... I don't think he had a bad game. I think he was frustrated with the lack of chances he it got. Was, he was, he was. And um, that led to that challenge. There was, no, there was no creativeness. And again, look, there was no creativity. And that challenge came from pure frustration. Like you said, yeah. you could see it in his face. Like, you, as soon as he took that run towards the player, that's it. I was like, oh, fuck, this is bad. <laughs> and it looked, it looked bad. It looked bad, let's face it. Yeah, um, it did look bad. And obviously on replays and stuff like that, you kind of realize, all right, okay, fair enough. It wasn't the worst. It could have been a lot worse, obviously. But, uh, and then up top, we had Eddie, we had Martinelli on the left. Another, uh, he had a poor game as well, Martinelli. Saka, another poor game, man. Quite quite Saka. I'm sorry, but I just, I know I'm an Arsenal fan through and through, but I just don't know how they rate Saka to the levels that they do. I I, I can't see it. I I can't. I think without Odegaard, he's not not that great, to be honest with you. He can be easily marked out. And no Ben White either. Like, obviously, Ben White played, but he didn't have the influence that he should have because, again, he, he felt more responsible for Havertz. He was like, I need to be up there, but I need to be back here because ain't no one tracking oh, back. Gordon, Even the Gordon track- is it gonna, gonna forgive you neither. He's exactly, quite quick. Exactly. And so, yeah, I think that, that tackle obviously came out of frustration because of the way that the, the team was selected. But, <coughs> excuse me, by the way, I don't know what's happened there. Um, I have just got my voice back, by the way. That's why we didn't do another podcast, just for the listeners. Um, yeah, overall performance from, from Arsenal, again, it's it kind of like lack of urgency. You know, they're not moving the ball fast enough. They're not connecting. Maybe Odegaard's fault. Maybe the tired... Pff, what the fuck, the tired fault? Odegaard's fault. Why is it Odegaard's fault? No, no as in not playing. That's what I mean. Oh, right. Like, yeah, sorry. The lack of like, why is it his yeah, fault? Yeah, it's always his fault. Standard, he's a captain. Um, <laughs> the fact that he, did, he didn't play, I just feel like we look a bit lost. Um and yeah, he had no urgency. I agree with you 100%. Jorginho, Jorginho wasn't great, to be fair. Jorginho, uh, every time you like, see him run back, by the way, he put yeah. his head down every time he ran back. And I'm like, Jesus <laughs> Christ, are you tired already? 
Much, so he does that for aerodynamics. <laughs> he does that for aerodynamics because we did that against Ch- uh, Spurs at yes. Wembley, and Song just had his pants down, yeah. and I was like, "Oh my god!" And then that happened again a couple of months after. Other teams were just isolating themselves in a way that they were one on one with Jorginho, and they were just like, "Fuck this! Okay. Let's just run past him." And that's, that's but, exactly uh, what they did. Newcastle did against uh, against us. Um, they, they sort of left him by himself, or they sort of tricked him to come out of that. Of that sort of uh, holding midfield role, they tricked him. By the time obviously he re- he realised that he lost the ball, he was just not quick enough to go and to go and win and it back. Also, though, I felt like when he's making the passes, the passes weren't as crisp from him. No, like a Declan really. Rice pass would be crisp and he'd be exactly in front of you or bang on like a yard just in front of you for you to walk onto it. With Jorginho, I felt like sometimes passes were behind. He was passing for the sake of passing. Yeah. He was when Zinchenko came on, he was asking for the ball, and Zinchenko wouldn't pass him; he'd just walk past him in sense of like, yeah. I don't need to give you the. Ball ball there no, but again no. it comes back to it's that move. education that you receive from Pep Guardiola at City is what's the point of passing when I can just walk two yeah. yards if I've got open space yeah you run that open space yeah, Declan, walk into the space. Him, Declan Rice would never pass the ball if you can run through and he did on many occasions he just now to be fair Declan Rice I'm very jealous that you've got Declan Rice and he did. <laughs> I was really hoping the, out of the two he's the one who would come to Chelsea with being a Chelsea fan but obviously you know he's chose a career for himself and uh, he's he's doing very very well, and you know, wish him all the very best. It's a shame it's for your team, but <laughs> no, I think uh, I, I agree with you. Obviously, Declan Rice, pff, what a player he is! Like I was watching, obviously, I watched Arsenal matches with my dad, and you know, we sort of I, we share a look when we see a player doing well. Do you know what I mean? Like we share a look, and we're like, yeah, what yeah, can you do? It, it, was, know, it, reminds me, it reminds me of that uh, look when you used to watch Messi and Ronaldo. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like on the respective teams. Yeah, watch yeah, me yeah, like, yeah. Eh, what can do you know what I mean? Like, what can, you do? Do? can you do? Can do you know what I mean? That's how he is. I love that feeling when I watch Declan Rice because I really feel secure. And honestly, if we had a better striker, I I think we probably would be very strong contenders for the title. But I agree. we don't have a striker. We've got Eddie Nketiah who has one cold game. He has one hot game. And it's like, that's not good enough, mate. I need you to be more consistent than that. He's not. Be playing. lukewarm. Be lukewarm. No, I don't need to be lukewarm. I just <laughs> be, be, hot. Game. be hot or don't be anything. <laughs> just I'll go somewhere yeah, keep the bench yeah. hot or whatever you want to do. Whatever. But um, I think, yeah, with with Eddie, you know, he's not he's not a leader of lines, basically. <laughs> you know yeah, I mean? no, no, he, just, he doesn't have to lead a line. But... Um, but I think uh, overall, we didn't have a bad performance. Like I said, we had a decent one. Our defenders were really good, apart from Ben White. Um, he was really was off his game. And I don't know how and why he was off his game. Very rare that you see that from Ben White. But there you go. Um, I think Newcastle played well, though, as well. I think they defended well and they counted well. They did. They uh, did. There was challenges, like obviously quickly touching on Bruno. That should have been a red card for me. You don't go and do that to Jorginho. Like from behind. I, I think, from, from behind, behind right. running, leading with you, flipping. What did he lead with? He forearm left with his forearm. And forearm then elbows. Like, just for foul play. That, that's dangerous. No, that is dangerous because yeah. you caught him on the forearm, but we don't know what the intent was. Is it forearm? Is it fist? Is it, what, it, what could it possibly be? Well, let me... What? Let me let me read you this little thing from the PGMOL, by the way. So this is this came from them. Uh, this came from them actually uh, from, from the microphones of the PGMOL. So let me just have a quick look at this, right, real quick. So this is what they said um, cool. for the for the Bruno tackle, by the way, for the Bruno elbow. Right, it wasn't it wasn't meant to be to hurt anyone. So they didn't. Again, can you believe that the guy led with his elbow towards someone's face? Uh, to, uh, to, uh, to someone to, to the back of someone's head, and now you're telling me that's not to injure someone. That's yeah, madness. He just had something on the back of his head. Yeah, it's like, come on, mate, what are you trying to do? You're trying to kill a bug or something? You know what I mean? So it's 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 madness. Um, but yeah, even even Alan Shearer said the same thing. Bruno should, should have been sent off, and that's because of a Newcastle fan. Yeah. Uh, for the for the three incidents leading up to the goal, by the. <laughs> And you heard that right, listeners. If you didn't watch the match right, it's three different incidents before they actually allowed the goal. First incident, which we're going to talk through right now because, again, I'm very aware of the time. First incident, was the ball out or not? Tell me. It's Rick. very difficult to see, isn't it? I know what they try to do today. I don't know if you watched it. There's a little Sky Sports, Gary... Gary Neville gave a little uh, little demo on how the ball could possibly look out from the angle where mm-hmm. the camera showed. However, from a bird's eye view, 
there's like millimeters, maybe a centimeter of the ball is still on, on the line. So then they probably thought with that is there's no clear, a clear and obvious error because there was no way for them to check that it was a clear and obvious error. So therefore, the decision on the field stands. Okay. Okay. Now, my thing is, right, if you don't have the clear cameras and the ball looks offside or the majority of the ball looks offside, right, how how are they arguing against... Uh, how are they given the the goal? Do you know what I mean? That, that's 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 my thing. Yeah. It's like if you, no, if you're in that okay, two yeah. minds, why not go with why not go with actually what's been in front of you and the ball? The majority, ninety percent of the ball. Let's face it, right? Or ninety five percent of the ball was out. So why not go with the ninety five percent of that? I hear what you saying, but they just can't. That's that's not the rule. So what they do is they're only there to support the referee if the referee made a mistake, and they because they couldn't show that the referee made a mistake, then all they had to go to is. Leave the leave the on field decision must stand. This this is a similar to the decision that they made with. Actually, no, it's not similar. I was going to compare it to the Luis Diaz decision in for Spurs, but that was completely different because they were like they cocked up their communication. With yeah. regards to this, they could not tell. But this my problem with this is more to do with if this is an elite sport at the pinnacle of football in mm -hmm. the Premier League, the best league in the world. We're talking about it, the richest league in the world. How have you only got VAR cameras on one side of the stadium? Yeah. Yeah. Like what is got? Can you not put them next to a floodlight? Like how yeah. much is it going to cost to put a couple of cameras next to the floodlight on the uh, on the on the advertising boards as well? Just face yeah, yeah somewhere I'll do that. That's a very good point actually. Put them on the advertising board. That is even a better example because no then you them. can do. Yeah. Nobody's going to touch them. They're exactly where then they are wrapped all the way around the stadium, yeah. and therefore then it would eliminate this whole thing of we need a better angle. Let's draw lines better. Let's do this better, and yeah. But for me. That's why, like like I said to you, I would be flipping fuming if that happened to Chelsea. So I totally understand your reaction. Do you know, do you know what it's funny, funny that I'm not the only one fuming? Do you know what do you know what it reminds me of, right? It reminds me of, say for example, yeah, you you I, again it's gonna go extreme, but this is how we, my brain works. Go on. Let's say for example, right, you you've got a gun, you go out and shoot someone, right? It's on camera, yeah? But the camera stops just before like the bullet hits. The other person so now yep. the cameras caught you with a gun cocking it loading it all that shit right obviously loading the cocking by the way let's just be clear on that <laughs> <laughs> i've never shot a gun so there you go um and the, and the i don't know the recipe i'm just <laughs> <laughs> you cocky you but i don't know does it bullets metal i don't know it's literally the camera catching you doing all of that pointing the gun at whoever you point the gun at pull the trigger but it just stops and now and the police watching it and going yeah yeah i know what you mean yeah he had the gun he had the intention he pointed at him he pulled the trigger but we didn't see, we didn't see the it. bullet yeah, hitting yeah, him yeah, yeah. you know ah, the guy's dropped dead on the floor though but we don't know the bullet actually hits him and that's honestly what that reminds me of and any calls where it's like uh yeah it could go either way well no how about you just go one way which is the clear way where the ball looks out just go with that how are you doubting yeah. that how are you doubting your own eyes I, I get that i get that but they literally they can't and those are the rules it's the same as the handball rule that you mentioned today <sighs> what we discussed about like people players are gonna have to end up being summoned yeah. and they're jumping for the ball they're having to be by their to, side yeah. they're literally a summon going up the river i told you, you can't do that. these are the rules these you know are the, the bands that, that you put like on your thighs like and you sort of do the sidestepping on your training yeah you put that around someone's way strap the hands in there done laughing Everyone's if anyone's chilling. listening they need to get on this idea that you just suggested put cameras on the advertising boards because that is genius idea and that could save a lot of a lot of discussions okay if they use that by the way pgmol i fucking want a job at your var offices <laughs> at stockley park whatever the fuck it is right i want a job there because just you yeah what just you what, yeah you're gonna be the old ref <laughs> No, I support bro. you, bro. I couldn't think, couldn't think of anything fucking worse than being an on field ref. To be getting demoted faster than flipping Anthony Taylor. <laughs> Hilarious. But, uh, Look, okay, so that was incident number one. Incident number two, obviously, there was the push in the back, which was a fucking push in the back. Push, push. You could see Gabriel, like, if you, you see, see him ducking for it, by the way. Like, I've seen those given. Like, because he is ducking. The reason, I, the reason, okay, I'm not going with you on 100% on this one, whether I've lost you, you're on a different tab. Because uh, I wanted to see your face while I say this. And uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so because if he doesn't oh, yeah, right. go down, if he doesn't go down to head of that ball, it's coming off his chest, probably ricocheting, going in more than likely.
like because of the position he was faced in. Because he's Raya, somehow if it, facing. If it bounced off Gabriel's chest, I think Raya he was a square been. on. He was a square on. He's more like as if he's looking at the post and Raya's to his left. So if he hits him, he's yeah, going Raya, towards either the post or he's going to go like towards. Master, yeah. yeah, like he says, like he mentioned a flap. So therefore, then he has to try and either flick it backwards as I'm doing that head movement. So duck your head forward and try to flick it backwards. And as he tries to do that, he can't just do that with neck, so then he has to bend his back forward. But because the hands of the other defender are on him, really? it looks like it's a push. So therefore then, is it a push or is it not a push? So I don't understand how that's not been given. Because if I, the justification for him putting his head down and so on and so forth makes perfect sense. But visually, it doesn't make sense because you're like, bro, I just got pushed to my back. And you can clearly see the arms. Who was it? Was it Joel? Yeah. Was Joel? Yeah. Was Joel? Yeah. Yeah. Like you see his arms clearly stretched out, by the way. And yeah, 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 yeah. They stretch out as the player's going down, yeah. so it looks like it's a physical push. But again, if it happened against my team, fucking fuming. Because it happened against your team, fuck it. And I don't think and, and the, the last incident, by the way, I don't think it was offside. I don't think it was No, like, I don't think it was offside no, either. No, no. I think uh, I think the offside because it looked like as if the ball got played backwards. You know, like it the didn't, first point of contact, it looked like as if the ball came back. That that one I agree with. That one I totally agree with, and I get it. It wasn't offside, and no, you shouldn't be calling for that. There was two wrong things. For me, it was the ball being out and being pushed in the back. That's it. The, the offside thing, I was like... I think you've got more like this on, well. on the ball, on the ball being, uh, being the pushback, not the ball running out, because it's difficult for the ball out. But yeah, for definitely, mm. possibly for the push on the back or this... Because you don't know. It's gentle push, gentle push, slight push, slight push. It's... it's it's a push yeah, full stop push at the end of the and again you, you hampered the defender from doing his job yeah. in defending and again just so we're clear for Arsenal fans everywhere like me Raya was par partially to blame for that goal because of the way that he just was yeah. nowhere at all and that was like I said that was the second time that he did it the first time I was like fuck me mate the ball he flapped the ball went behind him I was like oh thank god yeah, nothing, nothing came from that that's all and, that's and for all. me and I think now, now is time for Raya to be dropped I don't give a flying toss what Arteta thinks like oh we well, can't drop next. him because this and that now you need to drop Raya Ramsdale needs to come back in you need to gain you need to gain confidence because at the end of the day Raya is not our player you know what I mean? We've got yeah. Brentford, I think. Is it Brentford next or something? Yeah. After, uh, Brentford? Excuse me. Brentford in there. No, Burnley. Is it Burnley? Because I know, obviously, when we play Brentford, I know Ramsdale has to play that game because Raya can't. But, yeah, you know, before that, you need to, Ramsdale needs to have a, a run, in game, uh, run of games because, again, we lost against West Ham midweek. Three, uh, what was it? Three nil? Three yeah. nil. Bowen smashed it. And Ramsdale, again, people are going to blame Ramsdale, but I just don't, I, I can't blame Ramsdale. I don't think it was him, to be fair, mate. I saw, oh. the, I saw the goals. You can't really blame the keeper for those chances. But even even so, like, again, oh, lack of sharpness. Well, shit, the guy hasn't played. Whose fault is it? Yeah. We're all crying out for, for Ramsdale to play when he plays. We're like, oh, he's not sharp. It's like, what the fuck do you expect? He has to play one game at least to I get know, him sharp. So for me, next match, moving forward, Ryan needs to be dropped because he's made many, many mistakes in the last four games. Many mistakes. Um, and It'd be interesting some to of see them, if he drops though, but I don't think he'll drop him. We've got Champions League first, Seville, I think, come to see, town. See, that's what and I'm saying. Like, how are you going to put Ramsdale for, for, for the Champions League game at yeah. least? He's deserved that. Anyway, um, if it carries on like this and Raya keeps getting picked for cup games and fucking and Champions League games and Premier League games, then I think Ramsdale should leave. And you know what? If that's the case, I want him to go to a, a direct rival team like a Chelsea. Chelsea like a Chelsea, like a Man United, for example, because purely because I know he'll do well and I just know we'll kick out. Yeah. Just a yeah. fucking point. And it's got to that stage now where we need, we like, he but needs fairness, to be you, you guys do need to let him go. Like, if he just come to Chelsea, let him go to Chelsea. We've done we've done enough favours to let Petr Cech come to you, Willian, yeah. Louise, you know what uh, I mean? We've, we've so many players here. It's like, all those yeah, didn't thanks, work out for you. When, yeah, they, when they left us, they were one. decent players. Wankers. So... <laughs> She fucking had us over a barrel there, didn't you? <laughs> well, lube. <truly. laughs> no, sorry, no lube. The it's, it's no lube. Devil's lube. No lube. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, look, uh, I, as, a, as a match, I just, again, I, I'm not saying that Arsenal deserve to win that, by the way. Nah, you, guys, you, guys were, win that. you guys were pretty poor. Yeah. I, I, mm. You weren't your usual self. You were not your usual average. self. In terms of we're self, below yeah. average for sure. That's that was, what I mean by poor. Like, obviously, yeah. I'm used to watching you guys dominate from start to finish. Yeah. Possession, chance created, ball in the box, three goals, two goals. 
and then obviously yeah it just wasn't great rice rice was obviously rice couldn't you know he couldn't he couldn't keep the whole of the team on his back um but you know but he did he did what he could so yeah i think i think moving forward uh raya dropped maybe start tommy Asu a bit more because he was really really good um Odegaard needs to come back on and obviously needs to gain some confidence as well so but uh but yeah, I, you know, I don't really have much to add on uh, on Arsenal versus Newcastle. I think, I think Newcastle, um, obviously, they were overly aggressive, which it worked. It worked. They were overly aggressive, and it worked. Um, it rattled us, and yeah, and at the end of the day, they so. I would I, again not. They didn't deserve to win either. If anything, it was a, it was a nil nil. It should have been a nil nil game. Nothing more than that. And yeah, no, that should be being the fairest I can, by the way. Like, obviously, I do not want an apology from PGMOL. If you got an apology, shove it up your fucking ass. Um, and Ateta obviously came out after the match. He was like, I'm very disappointed. Very, you know, it's shameful that we, we call this the best league in the world and we're still doing this. It's embarrassing. Word for word, that's what he said. It's embarrassing. No, I heard, I heard what he said. I, th- I think what he said was a little bit over the top, to be honest with you. But... Um... It's it's one of those things. The emotions were high because he still has to file a complaint legally and via the kind of internal routes yeah. that they follow. But coming out and saying that kind of language as well, embarrassing, best league in the world, we need to be better and so on. Everybody agrees with it. Yeah, say it. As an elite manager, say it, like, say it then. Why why are all the managers? Why are the, all the other managers? Uh, you know, being quiet and little pussies. Uh, Guardiola came out and said, and obviously backed Ateta after that comment. The you know, Arsenal Football Club came out as a statement and they said wholeheartedly we support Arteta. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah, sometimes they were like, oh, you, no, no, because sometimes they can say, well, say we don't support Arteta like fucking He could have said he misspoke, he's, he apologised, oh, he yeah, spoke, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, 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 no, yeah. they were like, no, we'll wholeheartedly behind him. And again, more managers need to come out and say it. The more managers needs, come out and say it. Punished. Yeah, yeah, the more they come out again, it's a numbers game. If the more you punished, come out to unite together. If he gets punished, by the way, it means that PGMOL are running the Premier League and that's just not good enough. That's just not good enough. Mate. It's not good enough, but it's just the way that probably the FA are going to be like. You can't talk like that about the referee. You can't no, have those. Why not? See, this is this is the culture that we need to change. Yeah, you can't talk it. about that's the referee like that. Therefore, they, Simon Hooper or fucking Anthony Taylor or what's his face, Stuart <laughs> Atwell. They they're just, running riots that, yeah. out there. They're running riots out there, man. You know what I mean? It, it's it's not good enough. And look, I, I've calmed down since obviously since watching the match. Yeah, yeah. Thankfully, this would have been this would have been better if we had each other. If we did this on Saturday, I nah. think next time, next time. <laughs> it would have been just beeps yeah. everywhere, to be honest. <laughs> Beep. End of podcast. Thank you for listening. Um, <laughs> and no, that was not your tea kettle. <laughs> <laughs> so look, I don't, I, I don't really want to go into any of the, any of the other teams, uh, apart from just real quick on Liverpool. Um, Luton, it is a great favour. It could have been a better favor, but you know, there you go. Luis Diaz scored. I'm I'm happy for him because obviously his, his personal situation. And I've always liked him. I've always soon as soon as yeah, I like Luis Liverpool, Diaz I as well. Yeah, 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 yeah. Same, same. So, I think his father's situation is really sad as well. But I wanted to very quickly yeah. touch on when the kidnappers said we made a mistake kidnapping Luis Diaz's father. It was a complete mistake, and we should not have done it. And it felt like we made a mistake kidnapping Luis Diaz's father, but if anybody else's father, then it's not a mistake. It's it's a fair game. It's know, a fair game, man. Of course. What do you think about Scott another Luis, Luis Diaz? You know, Luis Diaz. <laughs> yeah, the, the English guy, obviously. The, the English with a guy. W. With a yeah, w. yeah, of course. Luis Diaz, yeah, with an S at the end and an E. <laughs> Diaz. Um, but you're very sad. And I hope, I don't know, if did he get a yellow card for showing his T-shirt underneath? I don't know. I don't know, but sure. I, hope, not, like, I hope he doesn't. And I hope he doesn't. Because I know, obviously, um, there, there are rules against having messages like that. So I hope that yeah, nothing no, nothing comes to sure the way. Hopefully not. I hope not. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I it's generally crazy. don't know. I haven't paid attention to it. But, but, no. uh, but Rick, look, obviously, we're going to get this pe- we're gonna get this out for the people. Yeah, uh, send it out an hour. People, so yeah. thank you so much for being here. Uh, we apologize for, obviously, lack of midweek podcast. But I've just got my wife back rick knows because i spoke with him that's really good way. Yeah. Did I do, yeah, you did. no you rang me you rang me we had a chat and i was like hello just no you will not have my credit card details <laughs> you're a nigerian friend yeah oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's it you got it um but yeah so thank you so much for listening and uh we appreciate by the way in the last for, just from the last episode we've had over 700 downloads oh, so quality. keep it going everyone absolutely love it and um yeah we keep loving it we'll keep making them absolutely right thank you so much for listening we'll catch you on the next one until then stay safe stay alert 